Hello everyone. Hi, it's me, Hedda Yomtov. And uh, happy Friday to all. I know this is probably an unexpected, you know, impromptu video. Um, I think that's what I'm probably going to do from now on, apart from what I'm going to do later on tonight, which obviously is the spooky sessions and the ones I do on Wednesdays. I know I'm sort of supposed to try and do one Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but with the way things are at the moment, I can never guarantee how things are going to be. Like yesterday, for example, after I put the video out on Wednesday, um, but be about three or four hours after that, I cricked my neck really badly and it was that sore that I had to just go and lie down. You know, take the, the meds that I needed to get rid of the pain and then lie down and of course as you know, I've got no um, discs in any in between any of the vertebrae in my neck um, due to the disc disease. So there's just flat discs and vertebrae rubbing up against each other. And it's they've been pushed out of alignment so much now. I've got a hump between my shoulder blades. So whenever, you know, I crick my neck, the wrong way and what have you it's it can be agony and that's more or less what happened to me yesterday so yesterday I was completely out of commission all day and that was unexpected and that's what happens I just have to take one day at a time um I just wanted to tell you two well two, majorly two things one this video is entitled um degrees of loneliness and especially for Katja. Katja is one of our lovely haveners and she writes in a blog and she wrote a lovely piece about how loneliness feels to her. So once she puts the um, comment in for me, I'm going to pin it for the rest of you to read. And if you'd like to comment on that, you are more than welcome. I know it probably do Katja some good for other haveners to reach out to her so that she doesn't feel so long. Um, I know that she feels a lot better now she's in the haven among like-minded people like herself. Um, but, you know, every little helps. And that's one of the things we do here is we always support and help each other. Um, so I will be talking about that. The other thing I wanted to just bring you up to speed was about my friend Lorraine. Um, Lorraine's not doing too well. Um, on Wednesday, you know, it was um, just before I put the video out and I didn't want to talk about it then because it was for Candace's birthday. And I obviously I didn't want to spoil Candace's birthday, but the truth of the matter was is that um, I was talking to Lorraine and she showed me the latest... Uh, pictures from our MRI scan and it shows um, a mass of it's hard to describe whether people are in centimeters or still working out in inches but it's about um, this big so that's about either two inches or about five centimetres ish, five, six centimetres in diameter. Um, as yet, she needs another meeting with her um, oncologist to find out what the next step is. Um, I do know that she's being referred for new drug trials taking place in London. Uh, I'm not quite sure when or if that's going to happen. Um, I'm not sure if she's going to have surgery or whether it's going to be surgery and chemo or just chemo on its own. I don't know. Apparently, our oncologist has said to her that throwing chemo at it now probably won't make any difference. I'm not quite sure what that means, and I don't think she really knows what that means either. Um, so all I would ask you is, Please, can you keep her in your press? Um, I think a wall of anxieties hit her now. 
she doesn't really know what to think, where to turn, what to say, what to do. And this is the third bout of cancer that she's had to face in less than two years. Um, and it's really worrying this time. It was bad enough before, but it's really worrying now. Um, all we can do is just keep praying for her. All I do is try and keep uplifting her spirits. I try and make her laugh if I can. I get her to talk about other things and keep her mind off it. And that is as about as much as I can do. I don't know what else to do. Tomorrow will be the fourth anniversary, the 21st of September, of me losing my best friend Suze to cancer. She died on the 21st of September 2015. And there isn't a day goes by where I don't think about Suze. Suze was a soul sister, a soul mate, because you can have more than one, you know. She, she and I were each other's confidant. And she's never been replaced because there is nobody that can replace her. I'm extremely lucky. I do have some lovely friends. Um, but there was no one and can never be another one like Suze. I mean, Lorraine knew her as well. Um, everybody knew that Suze and I were joined at the hip. Um... And I miss Suze every day. There is, this leans on to, lead, leads, leads, sorry, leads on to the topic of loneliness. And I've entitled this one, apart from it being dedicated to Katja, and for everyone who feels lonely, for whatever reason, But it leads on to the loneliness I feel without her. Now, like I said, there are degrees of loneliness. And I, I can only speak from experience, okay? I'm not a therapist. I'm not a counsellor. Uh, I, I mean, I'm nothing. Absolutely nothing in the scheme of things. All I can talk to you about is, is things that... Times where I felt extremely lonely... I felt very, very lonely as a child. Um, I mean, I was a middle child. Um, my eldest sister was seven years older. My youngest brother is five years younger. Um, and I was very much stuck in the middle and had no one. And as you all know who watched the video where I explained about my trauma as a child, you'll know that <clears throat> I didn't even have a mother to turn to. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Because my mother didn't want to know. I was just left, you know, just on my own devices. And, you know, like everybody else, I made myself an imaginary friend. Um, and it was just an imaginary friend. And I talked to her and I would tell her how lonely I was. But when I left home... I had periods of feeling very lonely. And again, I had good friends at the time, really good friends. I had good friends when I was, you know, 16 to 18, and then they, we all carried on together for a few years. And, and then you know what it's like, you drift, and then you make new friends, and you, the people come out of your in and out of your life, season, reason, lifetime. Um... But there's still times where you feel incredibly lonely and you can feel a sense of loneliness when it's part of grief. If you've lost that special someone and the loneliness you feel at the loss of a life partner, you know, husband, wife, a child... 
you know, even if you've lost a pet, and because he's part, he or she is part of your family, and when you lose that pet, and you can't replace them, because how can you transfer memories and everything onto a new pet? You can't do that. You've got to build new memories and a new relationship. And that, like everything else, all takes time. You know, I've spoken to homeless people and asked them if they ever get lonely. And a lot of them have actually said no. Because they see, well, some, some of them have said yes, obviously. But an awful lot of them said no because they made their own life the way they wanted it to be. Some of these homeless people actually preferred life on the streets. For them, it was easier. I can't quite get my head around that, but, you know, each to their own, whatever makes you happy. I'm all in favour of that, as long as everybody's safe. But there are degrees of loneliness. There's loneliness when, you know, you're watching your child have surgery and you don't have anyone there to turn to because your other half refuses to be there like it was with my ex-husband he would not sit through any of the surgeries that our daughter had to have so I was all, always on my own and the, there was a lady who I loved very much who was like a mum to me she was always at the end of the phone she was in ill health and when she could be there believe me she was there for me but I could always phone her and talk to her, but there was still this element of being alone and feeling lonely and not knowing what to do, who to turn to, and just wanting someone to hold my hand and tell me that it would be all right. And that was never there. So I had to learn to deal with it myself. And then you work through a marriage that isn't working and you feel incredibly alone. And it's not just feeling alone, it's that feeling of loneliness. No one to talk to, nobody to share things with. And even if you do have people to talk to, you don't feel as if you're really getting through to them. You don't really feel as if they're listening to you. And sometimes, as you all know, you can feel lonely when you're part of a couple, even if you love someone. You can still feel lonely. You can feel lonely in a crowd. You can feel lonely among people who you can sit and have a laugh and a joke with. But if they don't get you, the essence of you, then you still feel lonely. And then if you have a mental illness, you know, and just in my case with depression, I've, when I feel very low, I, f I don't feel friendless, I feel lonely. I feel as if I'm in this place that's dark and grey and black in some places where there's not another living, breathing soul. I can't feel, you know, for the want of a better name, God. I can't feel the universe. I can't feel anything. I've had people tell me that I've got a guardian angel around me, whatever. Yeah, I can't feel them. I've been told I've got a spirit guide around me. I can't feel them either. I'm not, I'm not denying that they exist. If this, this, these people tell me this, if they believe that, and if it's true, sorry, my hair is atrocious. These are all natural curls and I have, have major problems keeping them in, in place. And me looking half decent. Sorry about that. Um, one of the reasons that the Haven came into being would be because at the time when I was on Twitter and I was seeing so many people talking about being alone and feeling alone. 
And I thought, wouldn't it be nice just to have somewhere where you could come to and you didn't feel alone anymore? You know? And that's how the Haven came into being. And that's always been the number one rule. You are not alone. You are never alone. And I want to expand on that. When you come into the Haven, I want you to feel that the loneliness that you had been feeling is sort of, when you come into the haven, it's gone because you're not alone anymore. You know that you can talk to me, you can talk to any of the other haveners and you're not going to be ignored. You're going to be made to feel welcome and if even if it's just me that you talk to, you know, I'll talk to you and I'll try and help you as best I can. Um, and I've made quite a few videos before and I've talked about loneliness before then, but I've never had one that's totally dedicated to loneliness. And those people who say to you, well, if you're feeling lonely, then you need to get out there and be among people and start making friends. Okay, that's all well, very well and good. If some people can, can do that, some people can say, oh, do you know what? That's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to make some new friends. If it were only that easy. And I'm just going to use myself as an example. What if you're stuck in the house? Right? And it's so hard to get out. Yes, I've got a manual wheelchair, but this hand, I've lost so much muscle in this hand that I can't use to propel the left wheel. So I've got the right wheel, I'd end up just going round in circles. So I've got to be pushed. And the places I'd love to go would bore other people to tears. You know, they just don't want to go to those places. And I think it's wrong of me to make them go just because I want to. But I've just got to learn to deal with it. There are other people who have agoraphobia. And they feel incredibly lonely. And without help, they can't get out. And they can't make new friends. So the only way for them is online. But what if they haven't got the courage to go online and start talking to people. <clears throat> I mean, for example, I know an awful lot of people watch the, the videos in the Haven and they never say a word. They'll say things like, I mean, the ones that do make one comment, they'll say, I'm too nervous to come forward and speak, or I don't know what to say, or I just want to view, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to draw attention to myself. What about those people? How is how can it be easy for them to go out and make friends and stop this feeling of loneliness? And what about people who have got problems with their mental health? People with schizoaffective disorder. You know, I mean, I can't speak with any great you know, um, at any length really about that because it's not something I know an awful lot about. I would have to defer you to my friend Gary of Bike Polar Corner. Um, he would be much better at explaining how he manages his life. And um, I would strongly suggest you go over and see him. Um, I'll leave his link for you in the description box. Um... But it's not, if you are someone who doesn't suffer from a mental illness, who doesn't suffer from loneliness, who doesn't suffer from agoraphobia, depression, whatever. If you're one of these people who is happy-go-lucky, can get up, put your clothes on, go out the front door and can just walk to the pub and there's way and all sorts of things, then all I can say is you are so lucky. And, you know, 
and fantastic for you. And it's not about me envying you or anything like that. I am genuinely happy for you because I would hate for you to feel the way I feel at times and the way others feel at times when we feel cut off. And everybody's perceptions of loneliness is different. Mine is more of an emotional loneliness. I mean, I can always turn to my husband and talk to my husband. I can turn to my children and I can talk to them. And we are all like-minded people, so there's no... I don't have to struggle with what I have to say to my family because they do get me and they do understand me. So in that regard, I'm very, very lucky. Where they can't really help me so much is my, is when I do go into a very deep depression and I do feel this emotional loneliness, where I do feel very cut off and where I miss my friend Suze. And I just want to talk to her again. No. She was made of a lot sterner stuff than me, you know. When I, when I used to get low and tell her, you know, about it, and she would say, Shut up, you silly moo. Come on, let's look at some jewellery. And she knew how I was feeling. But she knew if that, by expanding on it, I'd probably only feel worse. And Suze was not one of those who wore a heart on her sleeve. She'd tell you something once and expect you to remember it, you know. And she only ever told me that she loved me once. And that was the year before she died. And I'd known her for 13 years. We were best friends for 10. And... You know what, Suze, if you're listening, I miss you. I miss you more than words can say. And I'm lonely without you. And like I said, I'm extremely lucky. I've got some very good friends. But I, just, I can't... I think... In a lifetime. Like I said, right now I have some really good friends, people who I've clicked with straight away. You know, um, and I mean, they know who they are. I'm not going to say who they are. Some, some of them are from the Haven. Others are, you know, you know, other folk I've met along the line. But I've got a very, very small close-knit circle of friends, very small. There's only five people in my circle, my inner tight circle. And that's because we've... It's hard to express. It's just we're all on each other's wavelength, you know. But they would understand when I say to them, and it's no disrespect to them because they are lovely people. But they're not Sue's, they can't ever be Sue's. There was only ever one Sue's. I mean, she was completely unique. Everybody knew that. There was only ever one her. And there never will be another. And that's not because I'm putting a block on it. Or anything like that. There was just there can't ever be another one. And I do. I'm, I'm lonely without her. I'm lonely without my. My best friend. When, when it comes to friendship. She was my, my go to. My be all and end all. And I was so honoured when she said that about me. About how she felt about me. 
Because believe you me, she was very popular. Very popular. Everybody loved her. And when she said to people, you know, there are very few people I trust. And she's about one of the very few I do. She's my confidant and I tell her everything. I tell her things you guys don't know and won't ever know. And I was like, oh my God, she's done that in public. For everyone seen here. And it floored me. And I remember her saying to me, don't you go get an old soppy on me. She, you know, she was like that. How do you combat loneliness? That's a hard one. I'm sure if I had an answer to that, none of us would ever be lonely again. Because if I did have the answer to it, then I would be telling everybody, this is your answer. But I don't. All I can say to you is, if you are capable of, you know, just connecting with someone, whether you're on your own and you can go into a pub or you can go for a coffee or into a library or a museum or somewhere like that, if you can. And you can strike up a conversation with someone. I would advise that you do it. If you can talk to somebody online, especially if they live near you, and if they ask to meet you, and if you can, take them up on it. It could be the start of something fantastic. You just don't know, do you? You can come here to the Haven if you're online. We'll make sure that you leave your loneliness at the door. And, I mean, if I could banish loneliness, I certainly would. Because it can be debilitating, you know. And like I said, there are so many degrees of loneliness. I don't even think I've scratched the surface of half of them. I felt lonely when my children got their diagnoses, my daughter with her eyes, my son with his autism. I was very lonely then. I felt that it was, I mean, yes, there were help groups and what have you, but It wasn't the same. I didn't feel I could connect to them. There was nobody nearby. And like I said, I felt, I felt lonely because of death. I felt lonely being in a dying marriage. I felt lonely when my children had surgeries. I felt lonely with her diagnoses. I felt lonely when I was newly divorced. And I still get bouts of loneliness now, like I say, with the depression. All I can tell you is this, I can only speak from experience. And all I can do is just reach out to you and say, look, I know how feeling lonely feels. I can identify with it for different reasons. And if you ever want to talk to me, you know, I'm more than happy to talk to you. More than happy. And I know that others in the Haven will support you. And the good thing about the Haven is, is nobody, nobody feels lonely here. That's a good thing because, you know, don't forget, 
three things you loved, wanted and needed. No one is ever alone. Because you're not alone and you never will be alone again. And just remember the words to message in the bottle by the police. Because we're all in this together. We're all here to support each other, to befriend each other, to reach out to each other, just to be there for each other. And when we go through hard times, to share those hard times and get some support. It's like I've come to you asking for your prayers, my friend. And I thank you most gratefully for those prayers. And she's also thanked you. I meant to say that before and I'm sorry. Lorraine also thanks you. She's so grateful. She really is. And I would ask that you please continue to pray for her. Because I do believe prayers are powerful. Because whether you pray to a God or whether you pray or you send out an intention, a good intention to the universe, it's all the same thing to me. Even just by saying, if there's anything out there that could help Lorraine with her cancer, please would you do it? That to me is a prayer. And if we can all do that, I'm sure, I'm sure something could happen. Because she's so nice. She's such a good person. I wish you could meet her. She's lovely. Um, I do want to end this video on a, on a happy note. And I realise we're a little bit over time. But one of our haveners has a little dog called Hazel and it's a little terrier. Hazel is lovely and Hazel is going to be the Haven's mascot. So as soon as we can get a picture up of Hazel, I'll, um, I'll get our owner to write a little piece so I can pin it and we'll get a little picture of Hazel up that I can show to all of you. And isn't that nice? Haven with its own mascot. Hazel for Haven. Isn't that nice? That's a nice thing to end, you know, this impromptu video with. And I think that's what I'm going to do from now on, is just whenever I feel the pull to talk, that's when I'll do it. Even though I know I've got another video coming on later on today. If I do feel the pull to talk about something, I'll just do it there and then. I'm not going to stick to any particular schedule. You know, because, let's face it, life gets in the way and the best laid plans, you never know what's going to come around and knock them down. So I'm going to leave this here. Um, I'm going to say thank you all very much for watching. Thank you for being here and for listening to me ramble and for putting up this atrocious hair. Um... Thank you for being here for all the other haveners because we all need each other. Because everybody needs somebody sometime. And I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. To the paranormal crew, I will see you tonight. Um, and... Um, I wish you all it's early, but Shabbat Shalom. May peace be with you and your homes over this weekend. I love you. Take care. See you again very soon. Bye bye.